So you've gotta wait until the end of your lease to buy a house, right? Wrong. You can actually buy a house while you're still in a lease. It just takes a little creative maneuvering, but you can do it. And in this video, that is exactly what we're gonna be talking about. So if you're stuck in a lease, if you're looking to buy a house, you better keep watching. So the first hurdle in this process is really figuring out what it's gonna take for you to break your lease. I don't care if you're in an apartment, in a townhome, in single family, there is a way to break your lease. It's in almost every single lease agreement I've ever seen. We just gotta know how much and how long is it gonna take. So in the fine print of your lease agreement, you can find maybe where they call it a reletting fee. Um, and this is essentially how you break your lease. Is it gonna cost you $2,000 to break your lease? Is it gonna cost you two months of rent to break your lease? Is the landlord expecting you to pay six months of rent to break your lease? Every contract is gonna be a little bit different with your lease, so be sure to look into that and that'll tell you how much it's gonna cost you. Another item here is how much notice you're gonna to need to give your landlord. So typically I see about 60 days, sometimes it's 30 days, so that's another timeline that we're gonna to wanna to know um, just when we're talking about trying to figure out the timelines and the cost to breaking your lease. And you can, if you are not able to go through your lease agreement, if you don't have it, should. But if you don't have it, you can always ask your landlord or your property manager. Just err on the side of caution here because ideally landlords want to keep you forever. They would love for you to pay rent forever. So that is going to be a delicate conversation about how you word that just for warning you. So for the purposes of this video, let's just say it's going to cost you about $6,000 to break your lease. So let's just say that's about two months rent, 6K. And then you're also gonna need to give your landlord about 60 days notice. And I actually just did a deal and that's exactly what we were working with. Well, long story short, they are closed, they're funded, they are moving in this weekend, we did it. So I know you can do it too and that's exactly what we're talking about here. So for the purposes of this video, we'll use that same example. Let's say we have to give your landlord 60 days notice, it's gonna cost you about $6,000 to get out of your lease. Now once you know that, we know the details, we know exactly what we're working with, you really wanna get in touch with a great realtor who hopefully has done something like this before and is very negotiation savvy because everything in a real estate transaction, everything in a real estate contract is negotiable. You just gotta know how to ask for it and why to ask for it. And that is why you need a realtor who is gonna be really great at representing what you want and what your interests are. And if you're around the Dallas, Fort Worth area, please hit me up. I am very negotiation savvy if I do say so myself and I would love to help you break your lease and buy property. And if you're out of the Texas area, if you're out of the DFW area, still reach out to me. I've got great partners across the US, across Texas, that if you're in San Antonio, if you're in Austin, uh, if you're in Houston, if you're in North Carolina, California, New York, wherever you are, reach out to me. I most likely have a partner there that I can send you. They can answer these same kind of questions and both of you can strategize how you wanna play this. So reach out to me if you're looking for a realtor. If you're in Dallas, you know who to call. Now, once you know what it's gonna to take to break your lease, you've partnered with a really great realtor. Now we gotta write the contract. So ideally you're gonna show a few homes. You're gonna see what's out there. Let's say you find the perfect property, right? You're like, okay, Brie, we are ready to offer. This fits all our needs. We're ready to go. Now we're gonna start negotiating the deal, right? We're gonna talk about the price. We're gonna talk about your option period. We're gonna talk about your earnest money. We're gonna talk about all the little details and the terms of a contract. One of those being seller concessions. So a seller concession is really what's gonna help us, okay? So seller concessions really take the form of closing costs. It's a credit to your closing costs. So at the end of every transaction, when you move to the closing table, you're gonna have some closing costs, right? Depending on your loan, depending on the price of the house, these are all gonna vary in price but you will have closing costs at the end of the day. For this example, let's just say it's about $14,000 that you're gonna have to bring to close on this property, 14K and closing costs. Now we negotiate 6K in seller concessions. That means the seller is giving us 6K 
to use towards our closing costs, which means to bring down our closing costs. So when you close on that property, instead of bringing the normal $14,000 that you would typically need, now you only have to bring $8,000 in closing costs, leaving 6K in your bank account and leaving 6K for you to break your lease. That's kind of how this works. So this will be something that we negotiate on the front end. So when you're writing the contract right before you DocuSign, right before you sign on the dotted line, uh, to submit your offer, this is one of those terms that will go back and forth with the seller. And the way that I would present this is saying, you know, hey seller, your house has been on the market about two, three weeks. We've seen that it's not gone under contract. My buyers are really interested. They love your house and they really wanna move in. However, in order for us to make this deal work, we're gonna need 6K for them to break their lease. If they can break their lease, we would love to move forward in buying your house. That's kind of how that conversation is gonna look like. And ideally, if this house is has been on the market at least two or three weeks or longer, we have a higher likelihood of being able to negotiate some of those terms, right? We can maybe have a longer option period. We can maybe move the price a little bit. We can um, ask for these seller concessions. However, the only time that this may not work and probably won't work is if you've got a beautiful property, <laughs> it just came on the market, it's updated, it's in a great location, it's zoned to great schools, it's priced just right. Something like that is probably gonna go to multiple offers. Um, and when we're competing against multiple offers, we've really gotta make our contract look mwah, perfect. So we can't be asking for seller concessions. Um, and if we do, we're just not gonna win that bid. So the only time that this probably won't work is if you have a seller who's just hell-bent on getting that one price and is not willing to negotiate, so then we just move on to the next house. Or if you're competing against multiple offers, then you know asking for seller concessions is not gonna make us the strongest offer, therefore we're probably not gonna win that one. But on the properties that have been on the market a while and we can negotiate more, that's the golden opportunity where we can ask for some seller concessions. Now another thing that my clients typically ask me about, my clients who are in a lease, they're like, hey Brie, Great, you got us the 6K in seller concessions, love that. But we really don't wanna pay a mortgage and rent on top of each other. I mean, paying both of those, especially with some of you guys who are renting, it can be really expensive. So I totally understand paying a mortgage and rent all together in one month would kind of be overkill. So ideally, we can avoid that. So in this case scenario, like we talked about, you go under contract on a property, you're typically under contract for about 30 days, and then you've got your closing. So on closing day, your mortgage payment typically is not gonna be due for another two months after the fact. So let's say you find the perfect property in July. We contract in July, we close in August, two months after August would be October, so that means your first mortgage payment is going to be October, giving you plenty of time to finish out your lease, finish out that 60 day notice um, to where you are not gonna be paying rent and a mortgage at the same time. So that's how we typically avoid paying double rent, double mortgage. Um, so if you have questions about breaking a lease, please reach out. I would love to help you. I would love to kind of help navigate this with you. I never feel like my buyers who come to me and they say, hey Brie, we'd love to buy a house, but we're in a lease. That should never be a reason as to why you cannot buy a property, especially in a market like we have right now where we can negotiate. If that's you, if you were looking to buy this year but you're stuck in a lease, you're stuck in a two-year lease, three-year lease, one-year lease, whatever it is, please reach out to me. I'd love to help you get out of it and make you a homeowner. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you on the next one.